Hi Aries, welcome to your daily reading. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about what's happening for October 31st for Halloween. So we have the sun in Scorpio, water sign energy aligned with Mars, fiery energy that rules over Aries and Scorpio. So we have a very intense emotion, emotional energy. It can be frustrating if you have nowhere to direct that energy, but it can also be very creative, um, inspiring. But Scorpio is water sign. It has to do with the emotions and the feelings that are kept within you and not shown to the world. So it can be secretive, hidden. Um, it has sort of a darker side to it. Um, because it's hidden below the surface. You have to dig in to find out what is really going on. It's kind of like a crime scene investigation. You have to look below the surface. Is it, is it really what it appears to be? Usually no, it's something deeper and darker or it's just deeper within the soul. So Scorpio is water sign energy, which has to do with the soul and the feelings that your soul experiences. So Mars, the planet of that rules over the god of war, Aries, first house energy, could be very exciting. It could be very thrilling, and you could do something exciting. Like today, I want to go to the haunted Queen Mary. Hopefully, <laughs> the person I'm going with wants to go, and we can have lunch there, but it is very haunted. So I would do a video for you guys on the haunted Queen Mary because it is super haunted and creepy um yeah so i was going to do that so that's kind of an adventure um we also have a lot of squares so we have the sun squared to pluto we have mars squared to saturn there's a resistance to learning and changing what it is is it's wanting to look at the soul and what's below the surface it's wanting to dig deep but it's not necessarily wanting to make radical change based on lessons learned in the past. So it's like, well, if we already learned this before. Why don't we just learn from that and, you know, make a change? It's kind of like Groundhog Day, where you learn before, but you're going to just keep going through it over and over um, until finally you learn and move on. So as a society, we have Jupiter direct. Now, Jupiter direct in Aquarius is squared to rising Scorpio. So squares are, res it's a resistance. It's like, I don't really want to do that. It doesn't really feel comfortable to me, but I have to do something. So it could be like public speaking. You may not feel comfortable speaking in front of a large group, but then you're called to do that. And it would actually do really well for yourself if you did that, which would be Jupiter. Good luck, good fortune money, all that stuff. So Aries, you have Chiron trying to Saturn retrograde. It's about healing the, the self, healing the, your soul, your identity based on things you went through in the past. So Saturn retrograde is about lessons you learned prior amongst large groups of people. So it could be school, high school, college, whatever, you already learned this and it may have caused you wounds. It may have wounded your soul. And it's, this is a very, it's sextiled. So it's like wanting you to learn this. Like, look, you learned this before. So it's a karmic lesson. It's like telling you, this is a karmic lesson, learn from it and then move on. Like, don't keep going through this karmic lesson. Um, that's the sextile to Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. So it's large groups of people. It's not like you and your neighbor or you and one person. This is like large groups, families, churches, schools. It's like, what did you go through before that wounded your soul, which is Chiron? And how do you have to heal from that? Now, we have a yod energy happening today with the moon connecting to Mars at a positive energy, it's sextile. So the moon in Virgo is grounded, but Mer Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So there's a lot of speed and action and talking and um, looking at little specifics. Um, 
so we have the moon the emotions that are connected to what's real what's practical and then this is connecting over to mars in scorpio very creative you could be doing something that enhances your income you could be creative doing some artwork which could be virgo and scorpio um, and this is connected straight up to chiron <laughs> so chiron is the wounded teacher so you went through it before and you need to heal the self but you're also helping others heal that's the wound itself and chiron was in pisces so a lot of people went through healing the mind or if you're pisces you went through this healing already um, you went through the wounds and then releasing karmic relationships is chiron it's like what keeps wounding me and then what do i need to let go of so scorpio is a deep dive you may have to look deep within the soul for patterns or experiences and then you learn the lesson and you say okay that's what that is and then i'm going to move on that's the energy of chiron it's like i'm the wounded soul but i'm healing and i'm moving on so the yod is a hand of fate or destiny so this triangle from the moon over to mars straight up to chiron so intuition is the moon things that are hidden in the soul over to mars very passionate very ambitious wanting to take action wanting to get up and do something about it um this then connects up to chiron you know and it's like if you're in a karmic relationship i feel like you won't you could be very critical of a person in this energy because you could be looking for little things that that person is doing that irritate you because mars could be irritated like you could be irritated by what someone the little things someone is doing so just be sort of aware of that because it would have to do with you somehow it deals with the wounded self how were you wounded personally and then that energy connects over to scorpio it's deep um and then it could cause you know anything from ambition you could be really super ambitious or you could be assertive aggressive hostile frustrated um angry and then this energy connecting over to virgo you could be highly critical of someone so you just don't want that kind of a hand of fate or destiny like you want something positive if you can um otherwise just try and find a way to relax even um if you find this energy too overpowering because there is a lot of resistance here like virgo is resisting gemini so they're both ruled by Mercury. It's almost like if you get too much information, it could be irritating um, with Mars and Scorpio. It could be frustrating for some reason. There could be like frustration. Um, the sun is squared to Pluto. Pluto is a complete destruction and breakdown, just a complete wipeout. So the sun in Scorpio wants to look at what's really going on below the surface and then and it's resistance to a complete just obliteration of something it's like well i'm not going to just pack all my bags and move out <laughs> but i'm going to find out what is it really that this person is irritating me about like i'm going to do a deep dive within my soul to find out like what is it that's really irritating me because those like little things like really get on my nerves which could be like leaving um a piece of toast on the counter with like a, a knife with peanut butter on it just like slopped all over the counter and you're like that's not that's really irritating to me <laughs> and you're like i'm gonna pack all my stuff because this person doesn't respect my boundaries blah 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 um you know there could be other things like that person just said you know oh you look a little bloated today or something because it would be words because virgo's ruled by mercury so it would be words the words they're saying have an emotional impact and so the words would be triggering <laughs> for you and your soul and you can be like why did you say that like i'm not i'm fine like thanks for noticing and pointing that out but like i'm good so if you know and then the yod the hand of fate or destiny 
would be, this would be fate. Like, so someone says something and then you, you're, it, it triggers you on a deep emotional level and then you're like, that's it. You know, because the apex point of, the apex point of the triangle up to Aries from Virgo over to Scorpio and up to Aries. So you have earth and water and fire. So it's actually kind of a good balance, except for the moon is in Virgo, which is your emotions are connected to Mars. So aggression, ambition. It's Mars doesn't sit around and wait. Like Mars takes action now. So you just have to be aware, try to calm yourself. Um, however you do that, you know, <laughs> So it doesn't, the good news is though, the sun in Scorpio is very impulsive, very aggressive, but it's squared to Pluto. It doesn't want complete destruction and complete annihilation of things. Um, like for me, I was even frustrated with this desk. This desk I've had for many, many years and I love this desk, but I was like, I want a, a desk that matches my chair. <laughs> So I was like, this irritates me on a small level. I'm like, it doesn't match and I want a new desk. And so I found the desk that I want. There's a certain person who is not in agreement with me on the desk. So I'm like, okay, well, I want this desk and hopefully this person will be on board with the desk idea. <laughs> so that's what it is, dealing with a fixed sign. A fixed sign, so Scorpio is a fixed sign, Leo is a fixed sign, um, Aquarius is a fixed sign. They like routine, strategy, plans. They like an itinerary. Okay, and if you go off the itinerary and the plans, no, like they are not okay with it. They don't go with the flow. They're not a mutable sign. Mutable sign like Pisces is like, okay, sure, we can change plans. It's fine, whatever. And Aries is like just everywhere. Like you can change signs. You can do whatever you want. You would just hear there and everywhere. Um, Gemini is mutable. They can sort of go with the flow and change and be okay with that. A fixed sign is like on a cruise ship. They need, what are we doing for breakfast? And then what are we doing for lunch? What show are we going to see at three o'clock? Like they need that structure. And if you mess that structure up, oh my God, like they're not okay with it. On a soul level, they're like, oh, like, no, I can't do this. So... You have to, as an Aries uh, or whoever else is watching this video, you have to seek to understand what's really going on in the person. They had a plan in their mind. We're doing X, Y, Z in this order, and this is how it's going. And if you as the Aries are like, I can change it up 15 times. I'm fine. Like, there's no problem with that. The other sign might be like, no, that doesn't work for me. Um, I really need a plan and it may really bother them a lot and they may even take it personally like well why are you doing this to me why don't you care about my feelings and you're like I do but like holy crap can't we just go to another restaurant for dinner or lunch like why they they are very set in their ways so okay so that's what I'm gonna say about today Try to find something exciting, like an adventure to do with Mars and Scorpio connected to the moon, because the moon is your soul. And, you know, Virgo is the day-to-day -day life of your soul. So you want some adventure today, but you want it within moderation. Um, Chiron and Aries, too, could be asking you to overcome some kind of fear that you could have. Okay, so... If you look at the red lines, those are the squares. There is peaceful harmony between Venus and Jupiter, which is really good. So if you push yourself outside your comfort zone and you do something out there that you've never done before, it could actually be very beneficial for you on some kind of level. It brings good luck into your life. Okay, so let's see here for Aries. What are we getting for Aries? Oh my goodness, look at it. We got the journey card. This is like going on a journey, um, doing something different.
travel. She's got her bags packed. Fifth chakra, Archangel Gabriel. Speaking your truth from your throat chakra. So if you have a throat chakra blockage, you will find it really hard to just articulate what it is you want to say to someone. You may stumble over your words or not really know what to say. Um, so you can just actually pause and do a meditation and think about unblocking your throat chakra. So we have second chakra, which is social. Um, being socially accepted. So socially acceptable, but at the same time, sort of like being able to integrate into a social, like social system or life. Integrating. Oh my God, now we're getting third chakra, which is joy and happiness. What puts a smile on your face? What brings you joy, happiness? So third chakra. Okay, so we're getting community. There's something here about supportive people around you in the community. Um, indecision, having a choice to make. Seventh, now we have crown chakra, which is here. It's like above your head. This is connecting you to God and your angels. Asking God for the answer. Um, if you're really stuck and you don't know what to do, ask your angels for guidance. Then how does your soul feel? What does your soul want you to do? Then we got the sun, happiness, joy, and success. All things working out in your favor and positivity and growth. Um, so it, it's pretty much showing here, like you can speak your truth, connect in with what you truly desire. There will be other people around you that could affect your decision, but with the seventh chakra, ultimately you ask your angels for guidance here. And then we got the sun woman holding a coin is here. And the angel of love. So the woman holding a coin is somebody making a generous offer to you. Um, someone who could be willing to support you in some way financially. And that could be coming up tomorrow, like maybe Monday or something. Okay, so let's see what we're getting here for Aries. Um, I do want to pull for Halloween. Um, the Witch's Wisdom. What's coming up for Aries today, please? Oh, so we got banishment. Banishing any negative energies from around you, just like keeping it away from yourself. High Priestess, following your intuition. And we have Altar of Dedication, which is doing some kind of like ceremony or something like that. Um, so you could, there's many things. You could just burn candles or... Um, you know, there's lots of like little things you can do on like a special night. Um, I don't really do many ceremonies per se, um, but I will like sage and maybe burn a candle and just sort of like set an intention. But um, I try to just connect with God and the angels all the time. So I'm, I always want to be connected through my seventh crown chakra, like that's my goal every day is to like be directly connected. Once I feel unaligned, where I'm like not aligned with God, then I feel it right away. Like that's not aligned. I need to back up. Maybe I need a snack, <laughs> um, you know, or something like that. So um, I need to like back up and re realign with God. And that's how I, you know, basically do things. So let's go ahead and see what these energies are popping up for Aries today. First house energies. I could do all the zodiacs. See, I could do like three cards after Aries for all signs and see what pops. Or I could do individual videos. I don't know.
Okay, so for my Aries friends, what do we have here today? Holy Spirits and Angels. Yeah, those yods are fated events. So it's a fate that you can control, though. So there could be something that sort of triggers you a little bit, and you have the choice in a yod to actually do something drastic or to be cautious or learn or do some kind of soul searching instead. So yods don't have to be like the end of the world, especially on Halloween. Okay. So messages for Aries. Okay, I'm going to cut this right here. Oh my goodness, we've got Scorpio energy right here with the death card. Look at that, Scorpio. <laughs> Major change, transformation. It's the energy of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, you're re, you know, uh, it's a rebirth of your soul. So let's see what we get. The nine of coin, independent. So you're financially independent or you're just, you're just independent. You're doing well on your own. Um, not codependent. King of pentacles, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, energy in the crossing here. Okay, so you could have a partner or a potential partner coming. Seven of cups. Having to make a choice, it's not easy. Like, it's complex. You could feel emotional or distracted or not knowing quite what to do. Nine of Cups. A wish comes true. A wish is fulfilled for you here. Knight of Swords. Somebody may have lashed out or lost their temper or had some urgent message or they could have just been very frustrated with you. Queen of Water, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. It looks like it looks like there's someone trying to come back and possibly apologize. Two of Pentacles is your energy. Minor Arcana for managing, you know, or uh, you know, weighing your options. Like, what can I do? King of the Wands is around you. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, a leader, an adult, someone who takes action. Um, very mature energy, too. So we have two very mature people. And then we have this water sign in the future. Water sign. Um, and underlying energy is indecision. Six of coin is what you're wanting. Payment or balance. Some kind of 50-50, but it's about charity. This six of coin is about Taurus energy of material charity. So you're wanting either someone to pay you or possibly you're wanting to pay someone and help them out. It could be either way. Oh, the justice card. Justice, fairness, balance, equality, a wrongs made right. Okay, so something is confusing for you. You're trying to maintain... You're trying to do your best, basically. You're trying to weigh your options, do your best. You're you're keeping all the balls in the air, like juggling. Um, future energy is water, emotional, sensitive, caring. Let's see. Six of Cups, a friend comes along to lift your spirits. Ooh, in the tower. So that could be someone from your past, unexpectedly returning. Five of Cups, someone's feeling kind of down about something. Queen of the air, Libra, and five of pentacles. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is like, I'm not tolerating any BS. Queen of the swords, five of pentacles, and the devil. This is like, I see the situation clearly for what it is. I see some kind of toxic situation or controlling behavior. Um, 
And then somebody feels like left out. Somebody ends up feeling like left out in the cold. But it's not you. So justice is the outcome energy. Bottom of the deck was the death. Ooh, of the Hierophant and the Ace of Cups. The end of either a job or a marriage, but I hope no one is impulsively quitting their job during this yacht energy or divorcing their partner. Um, it shows you as trying to maintain balance, juggling. What is two of pentacles? What is two of pentacles here for Aries? What is the two of pentacles? What is Aries energy? Okay, the Hierophant. So I believe yesterday you were in the Hierophant energy. The two of pentacles comes after an ace and it's before a three. So it's like you're working hard. You're doing what you can to get by. You're paying your bills. You're working. Somebody gave you a job and you actually go into your job. Do your job. Hierophant is your energy. So you have a set of principles that you follow. Like me, like I align with my higher uh, my higher self and God when I need to make decisions but the Hierophant is your energy so you are the principles and you have a set of you know values that and ethics that you don't want to move away from um, it could be that you're married but I, the Hierophant is very religious and spiritual it's the counterpart to the high priestess so it has to do with the spirits and the angels and, you know, um, ethics. What is the justice energy right here? What is the justice? Okay. Somebody may get triggered today, ace of rods, and decide to walk away and say, this is really irritating for me and I'm leaving. Like, I don't want to be a part of this. So that... That could happen. What is Seven of Cups underlying? See, I just said this. High Priestess is the counterpart. Um, secretive, spiritual, quiet, following your intuition. It's both energy of, both of these cards are Pisces energy. It has to do with the subconscious mind your intuition, it's water sign energy, it's very quiet, it's not loud. Um, and what is the queen of water? There's a water sign here. I feel someone you know could be going through some mourning. They could be mourning a loss. They could be feeling quite sad. Now, what is the nine of cups for Aries here? Okay, the lovers. A choice to make, a union, a bond. The lovers represents unity and choices in your love life. Now, it could also be healing of a relationship. We have Archangel Raphael coming out of the sky and blessing two people, Adam and Eve. And you're nine of cups, like you, you feel pretty content um, underlying energy is spiritual. Okay, you get some new information here. Ooh, the King of Wands. So the King of Wands is in your environment, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, and you get this Ace of Swords, which could be a new challenge, or it could be a new idea, new information. Okay, so this energy is around you. And... What is this Five of Cups energy here? What is this Five of Cups? Who's coming in with the sadness, the remorse, feeling loss? Okay, we have somebody reaching out to you. Knight of Coin. Somebody who's loyal. It's coming in as an Earth sign energy. Somebody who's offering you 
reaching out to you, offering you money. We have the strength and the knight of wands. What is the high priestess energy underlying here? You want to follow your intuition. What is the high priestess following your intuition? What is the high, high priestess following your intuition? There it is. Okay. Something about the justice and the three of wands. You're very motivated, sun and Aries, personal motivation, and the justice is here. You know, fairness, balance, and equality. Some of you could be saying, you know what, I want a divorce. It could be something like that. It could be you're anticipating something, but it could be turning your back on a situation and then saying, I'm going to focus more on me. Um, so the high priestess could be some secret that you're hiding where you want to focus more on yourself or your future. Okay, why are we getting justice though? Justice is a major arcana for a wrong that's made right. Balance comes into your situation. Justice is served for you. Okay, magician. So you may have made something happen. You may have made justice happen for yourself. Maybe a legal document, a court legal matter. Because um, it's a major arcana and the magician is a major arcana, which means this is something big. It's not something like going to get the mail out of the mailbox. This is like huge. This is like a big thing. Um, underlying energy is confusion with the high priestess with justice here and anticipation, waiting. Um, what is this lover's energy? What is this lover's energy? Why are we getting lovers? Okay. Confusion in the tower. So something that is unexpected. I believe there was um, I'm, I'm having like some kind of vision like I don't know where I saw it. Knight of Cups. I thought I saw oh it may have been underlying a Six of Cups. The Moon and the High Priestess or I'm sorry, the Emperor and the High Priestess with the moon. There's a change here, and this could be a soulmate. Because the High Priestess and the Hierophant, this is like a twin flame that's like a spiritual soulmate. Ace of Swords is around you. You get new communication, new information. Somebody could be watching you, and then we have here somebody reaching out, Knight of Cups. Okay, earth energy is here. The death, something changes everything. Like, this changes everything. It's unexpected. You're like, oh my God, like, what do I do? I have a decision to make. I didn't expect this. Somebody's offering you something here out of, like, consolation. They may feel guilty or remorseful. Um, it's like the energy of being loyal to you and also gifting you at the same time. So, Seven of Cups, that's energy of Neptune, fantasies illusions, things that aren't real, lots of thoughts going through your mind, lots of choices that you have to make about high priestess, hierophant, and you, you're trying to maintain balance. Now, somebody may say some triggering words to you today. Um, could be many, many things. And you feel like this is it. Like, I, I'm done. Four of swords. Like, you may just decide to not talk to someone. Justice and the Magician, though, this is big. This is like, justice is being served for me. I made this happen. The Lovers comes in with the Nine of Water. Emotional wish fulfillment and a choice in love. Okay, so what is the Lovers? Okay, we're getting an Ace of Cups right here, which is a new potential for love, peace, or happiness. But it has to do with new feelings. So you didn't feel this way before. You didn't feel this way yesterday. But you feel this way now. So it's new feelings. Men of air. You may just not like what someone says today. What is the ace of swords? Okay. Emperor. Ooh, king of pentacles. 
Could be an earth sign, and there's someone here who's in a position of authority. Could be a parent, a father figure, a boss. Um, and this person says something. It could be triggering or challenging. You're turning to your belief system, though, with the Hierophant and the Two of Pentacles. You're like, I'm just going to, you know, follow what my belief system is. Chariot. You, your eyes are on the prize right here. Like, you're not allowing something to distract you. Because it's small. Aces are small. It just might be some small words that somebody says, and you're like, that's enough to like trigger me to quit this job or leave you behind me in the dust. Three of Pentacles and the Devil. Okay, with the Queen of Air. So there could be people like toxic people and gossip. Page of Swords, Ace of Coin, um, Libra, Lady Justice about the Devil and the Three of Coin. I would say don't allow anything in your external environment to trigger you to the point where you change your life drastically. And um, there's a really good movie called Nomad. So you may want to watch this movie called Nomad because when I watched Nomad, I thought, you know, I'm never going to like let myself get to that state because this woman had so many outside triggering events uh that she was not being sovereign she was allowing everything around her to make she would make gigantic decisions that would decide that would be her fate so she quits her job she her husband i think dies and her child dies and she just gets herself into a world of like she doesn't function and it's a good movie because you think i don't want that to be me <laughs> like ever so you're like that's never gonna happen please god jesus like may that never happen to me good grief so you know so it's not so for you aries you've got strong ethics morals and principles that are connected to you are the hierophant here you have a certain moral standard so thank god you've got a moral standard that you follow and you don't allow little things to get to you hopefully it shows you with the chariot energy like you're just going to keep your eyes on the prize and keep going um justice and the magician a contract could be something magical is happening for you magician is magical it's resourceful but it's also magical it's confident um but it's bigger than that it's supernatural almost the death card on the bottom says something big is changing here with the Hierophant energy, your belief system with an ace of water, a new, a new beginning. So there's new feelings here. Okay. So below that was the moon. Could be a secret love. Emperor is here with high priestess, which is secretive, intuitive, quiet, not saying a word. This is just like, your secret's safe with me. That's High Priestess. I may be overwhelmed, but your secret's safe with me. Like, I will tell no one. You get this Ace of Swords in your environment. Could be a coworker, Eight of Coin. Knight of Cups. Okay, we've got Earth Sign Energy in there. So it's looking like. There's like two stories. Somebody could be coming towards you with. Um, the an apology or something they feel guilty. Justice and the magician is the outcome. Justice is served magically; it happens. However, in your environment, you have a king of wands, which could be someone who's hostile or fiery, with an earth energy in the emperor and an ace of truth. So somebody here is, you know. And then it shows someone with an ace of rods. They're sparked and then eight of cups. They decide to depart. So we have here find your purpose with patchouli oil. And then we have find your power with ginger. That's nice. Those are good ones. 
Oh. Ooh, so we have the apple, the forbidden fruit. I don't think it's a poison apple. I just thought poison apple. I don't think so. But maybe. Ooh, something as sweet as honey, ambrosia, and needing to sage and purify your environment. I don't, I mean, chamomile, needing to relax. Yeah. This energy of Mars and the sun aligned in Scorpio, which is emotions, very deep, strong emotions that are sometimes repressed. With these two masculine fiery energies, it's going to bring up repressed emotions. And then it's like something can happen if you don't take control and be sovereign over your own self. Like, you know. Okay, so. Okay, so justice is serves here. Something is magically transpiring. Um. But there is an energy of some kind of event where it may make you need to have self-control because we have the strength card coming after the aid of water. So if somebody's like ticked off, it's showing you have to be the peaceful warrior. Like you have to be the peaceful one if they're going through a hard time. Like I said, fixed signs can't adapt. Um, a lot of fixed signs can't change a uh, can't change the plan for the day. So um, it requires sensitivity. The death, the Hierophant, Ace of Cups, the Moon, the Emperor. This could be a new relationship or a job as well. Okay, Ten of Coin. Okay, so I'm gonna just pull one or two more. For you, Aries, I know this is such a long video. Appreciation. Uh, other doors are opening, and then we have here rest and relaxation. So there's something about needing rest. Peace needing to find your center, needing to realign attachment journey again. Okay. Well, I hope all of you guys have a great Halloween. I hope you have so much fun. I hope that you feel creative and inspired like I do to go out and do something that is unusual or unique for yourself. Something that could actually bring you a lot of good feelings, Jupiter connecting to Venus. Something that can make you feel really happy and it might be something you where you learn something as well. Um, so I, if I go to the Queen Mary, the Haunted Queen Mary, I will do a video later. And so you can wait for that and check that out as well. Thank you so much, Aries, and take care.